dias, hermanos and hermanas. This is another Eugene where Poncho Eugene is going to be viewing things. And of course, welcome to episode number 10, the anniversary episode of Public Drum Shaming by Eugene R, where R stands for vulgar roasting congratulations ladies and gentlemen we made it to batch number 10 which means that with this batch we're gonna be done with 100 drummers awesome here you can see the 10 brave and unlucky participants for today's batch with the corresponding timestamps make sure that you use them in case you prefer to make a time traveling jump in the future to the desired video for any one of you who has not submitted his video yet and would like to be featured in the series please make sure that you get to know the rules first before you send me your stuff as always you are welcome to support me financially on my patreon by becoming one of my patrons any kind of help and support is appreciated during these dark and uncertain times the longer we live the more uncertain and darker the times become i really do enjoy making these videos but they are very 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 time consuming they also consume a lot of computer power and juice and human juice as well so if you help me out maybe i can make these videos more frequently in the future before we start i'm gonna review my last review once again you know i'm also a drummer so i kind of deserve to be featured in these series as well every once in a while and let me tell you this that i was using the sure mic last time i plugged it in my zoom recorder on the external channel like i always do but the zoom recorder itself was only set to two channels which are the built-in two condenser mics and i use those so the mic was plugged in but I was not recording with that mic. You know, sometimes I'm an idiot as well. Unfortunately, sometimes too often. With that being said, I wanted to thank the Academy for this award. I wouldn't have made it without you guys. Enough chit chat. Let's start with the first submission of today's batch. And this one is from Maximilian Scarpa. Fresh meat. Uh, that should sound right. This is Wake Up Dead by Megadeth. Trigger on the snare. Metallica and Zeppelin. And a pearl pedal in the back. Oh, guitar solos. Wi Fi. Slow zoom in cameras. This is something I really don't like. Good sounding drums, tight performance. Oh, shaky camera. Mounted on the crash splash stand. Pay attention how the toms sound very punchy as well, as if they are triggered, but just the snare is triggered. So it seems like he triggered his snare and didn't trigger the toms, although the toms sound equally as good as the triggered snare. So nice, nice. Very good sounding kick. Oh, nice. Short burst with the kicks. Very tight. Super tight, by the way. Suspiciously tight. Very nice. Nice powerful hits. Uh, not over the top powerful. Not Casa Grande powerful, but powerful enough in my opinion. A good stick range on the left hand on the snare. Yes. Very nice. Also like nice dynamic playing on that snare roll now. I really love how the poster in the back says Music want, uh, music makes me want to party all night. And then you look at Maximilian's facial expression. And you can tell that he was partying all night for sure. <laughs> before recording this. I feel you bro. Yeah actually he was partying all night and he woke up dead. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sharing this with us Max. All right, thank you very much for your submission. The good stuff, super tight. Very nicely sounding drum kit, everything. Kick, snare, toms. Even if I pointed out that the tom sounded as good as this triggered snare, everything was like equally perfect in my opinion. Uh, super tight performance, very nicely executed parts. Very good. Uh, the, the video production was, let's say, pretty okay. You know, decent. You had the... 
one, two, three, four cameras or something. Uh, so that was nice. Honestly, I cannot really um, compliment you too much more than this because everything was nice. The bad stuff, first the shaking camera. Yeah, that's one just a very, very minor thing. You know, when you're attaching stuff to symbol stands, that's gonna happen, you know? So preferably have separate stands for cameras. Of course, this is like a very minor issue. Maybe also some additional lights, make it look a little bit fancier and that should be okay. The angles were okay, so uh, not that much criticism towards uh, the video production overall as I complimented already your drumming in my opinion like the power and the precision was good But I could maybe use a little bit more of the uh, the Dave Mustaine Face, you know, you could maybe go a little bit further with that because uh, it did seem like you were partying all night And you're a little bit tired. So you were focusing on playing the parts and being tight, which is good after you're confident in that you need to focus on the performance as well you need to kind of perform for the camera perform for the people act a little bit more i mean to make it more interesting to make it more exciting maybe you were excited on the inside on the outside it didn't really look like you were too excited but this is just like my five cents uh so don't listen to what i have to say Overall, this was, in my opinion, a very nice and tight execution, so thanks, and let's move on. Submission number two from Mr. Uther Sayer. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'll just have to say that I'm very, very glad uh, he got to submit the video for us, because I was honestly not sure, so all I have to say is... Glad you could make it, Uther. The man and I are honored by your presence. This is Cannibal Corpse, Condemnation Contagion, Hate Eternal version. We're expecting some Derek Roddy cosplay, hopefully. It says uh, that Eric wrote the song for Cannibal, so he wanted to do a version as if it was a Hate Eternal song. Awesome. What a cool idea. Okay, so those are uh, triggers on the toms. The snare is real or no? It's like a hybrid kit. Yes, one foot swivel. Beautiful. I'm blind even with glasses. It seems like there's a mic on the floor tom and on the snare. Triplet hammer blast. Bomb blast with the left hand leading. Not easy. Full leg. Ankles with swivel. Perfect. Just the way it should be. The snare sounds super punchy. Maybe it's also triggered. Oh, yeah, he knows that the fast sh is gonna kick in. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. You see that the elbow, elbow push? He's cutting the bread on the right symbol. It helps with stamina. Ah, the, the snare is getting off in the kicks on the hammer blast. Nice. China and Tom's in between. It would be more comfortable to have like a Tom on the left side maybe. Crossing the hands is, is a bitch there. What a killer riff. I love it. Oh no, the bomb traditional blast. Also very tough to pull off. Uh, technical stuff. Awesome. Well done. That was actually very, very impressive. Thank you for this submission. The good stuff. Very uh, precise and tight and uh, sloppy tight. If you are watching these series, I think it was the either the previous batch or the batch before this where I defined the sloppy tight. What, what that is, you performed tightly. Some of the things were falling apart, um, but I could most likely tell that either you didn't edit or touch your drums at all, or maybe just a little bit, I don't know, but it sounded very, very raw. So basically, you're a good drummer who gave its best and it's not super quantized to the grid, so it doesn't sound fake. In my opinion, this is a very genuine and honest drum video. And you could really tell by the motion of your hands and feet that everything that we hear is actually played by you. So if you know who I am and what kind of stuff I play, 
I say most likely I wouldn't be able to play it that well or better than what you did now, you know, like without touching, without editing, without post processing my stuff. Another thing that's like it was a electric kit or like hybrid kit. So everything was super duper triggered. And uh, that is dangerous because it's like a dead giveaway if things go wrong and uh, you're sloppy. And at the same time, you were very good. So this is even harder. If that would be an acoustic kit, you would sound even tighter because the sound would be totally muddy. You know, so in terms of technical parts, uh, it's absolutely awesome. Shame on me, but I don't recall hearing the original song, so I don't even know the original drum parts. And I don't know how much you have changed here, but most likely Paul wouldn't be able to play these kind of drum patterns anyway. We're not getting younger. <laughs> kept it variated let's say it's like four minutes of extreme stuff but it was very interesting to watch not boring at all the bad stuff as i cannot really criticize your drumming at all in my opinion uh just the production maybe the video production okay so um more lights more cameras uh of course the drums you know if you could do that on acoustic drums that would be like super duper cool uh what you did with this electric kit is a very nice way to make like a let's say low budget video sound high quality so that's good but in the end you you still want to have the acoustic kit in order to impress the masses you know like the the normies you could give maybe a little bit of body and face juice i know that you don't have the luxury to really go all wild and crazy uh, but maybe just a tiny little bit. You need to spare your stamina, of course. But overall, this was good. Some of the blasts were a little bit sloppy. Uh, the hammer stuff. Uh, snare was going in between the kicks where it's not supposed to do that. Uh, and some, let's say, spacing and timing issues. But in my opinion, it was like really not that tragic. So it's like, just keep doing what you're doing. And I think you have great technique. So that was awesome. Let's continue, guys. Submission number three from Rafael Francisco. This is Demu Borger, Blessing Upon the Throne of Tyranny, guitar and drum cover. Let's see some Demu. Electric kit, access. Very nice wrist technique on the left. Oh, doubles. Very gentle doubles. Some people are gonna call it cheating because it's a mesh head with double strokes, but doesn't matter. You think it's easy to do? Try to be precise. Nice finger motion on the right symbol. Nice stick range. Very, very precise double bass. Suspiciously precise. Oh. Nice, nice bursts with the doubles. Yeah, back to double bass. So this is like one take. No camera angle shifts. Okay, now there is. We have the extra guitar solos. Oh, so many guitars here now. It's a very nice uh, electric kit he has there. Probably not cheap. Oh, he's skipping the one kick hit on the snare. Oh. Oh, this is tough. It's like a uh, perfect amount of even notes. More tits. Very good. Awesome. This was super cool. The good stuff. Very tight. Very precise. Uh, of course, good sounding kit because of the electric drum set. So it's going to sound very nicely compressed and cutting through. Great technique on the right hand. Great double strokes, of course, both with bursts and with longer uh, drum patterns. Nice rolls, precise blasts. The bad stuff. So I'm not sure if you have touched your uh, drum performance in terms of editing and quantizing. If you did okay it's obvious because you know it's an electric kit if you didn't then i am 10 times more impressed and i'm just jealous of your precision which is awesome it was very impressive that you were 
doing everything in one take not cutting the video at all respect but the only thing that was a little bit disturbing for me you know is the amount of screen time you got as a drummer the left bottom corner it was just like one fourth of everything and then there was a huge uh, block also for the feet which was a little bit too big in comparison to the upper body and of course the two guitars got equal attention so like the whole screen was split into four since you know like you wanted to be fair with the guitar player of course everybody got only half a screen so that's okay but you know sometimes uh, you would prefer to have let's say more important elements to be bigger on screen than the others I mean like yeah the guitar player you know what what's important in a guitar player let's say maybe his face uh, who am I kidding uh, his fingers you know and playing the, the the neck of the guitar and the the right hand you have a lot of stuff going on in the upper body section when you're doing the rolls and the blasts and which was just one fourth of the screen which was a little bit too small for me and the foot cam was way too big for this minimal stuff that's going there so like the proportions of how you split the screen depending on the importance of the stuff that you're showing in terms of size that's like who cares nice technique and impressive let's move on this next submission is number four from Mr. Jakub Zion Schlewinski. Cześć. Oh, he looks like Alistepario Sibiriano. He's got the similar logo. This is Septic Flash, the Vampire from Nazareth. It's cover number 34. It's nice to keep track of how many you did. It's a rather legendary song. Oh, Charcha Copito, Space Battles. Okay, this is acoustic and um, oh no, the zoom in cameras again. <laughs> so he's doing that with the left foot. Is he left footed? I'm wondering. Okay, I thought he's a lefty. Wow, great ankle technique. Very precise. Nice ankle technique. Oh, he's using the Chacha Copeta heavy beaters. Wow, man, you are brave. No zoom in, zoom out cameras. Nah, please don't do that. It's like, it's very fast. Like the, the movement of the camera zooms in too fast. What's going on? He's leading with the right hand on the hi-hat. The snare is over the left, but he should be a lefty. He has a lefty configuration. So he is not leading with his left usually. What's going on? Punch Levinsky, if you're watching this, please explain. Yeah, he's leading with his left foot and the left hand on the right symbol. So he is a lefty. Ah, uh, two over two. Dylan Watson does not approve. Yes, a little bit of molar on the snare. I'd say molar, yeah. Doesn't look like molar, but it is like a molar inspired impulse on the this accent. Everything except for the trigger sounds like it's actually camera sound it's a bit weird that he has yeah maybe the toms the toms sound mic recorded but very unprocessed like no eq no nothing yes he plays with enough passion and that's important because you cannot edit your passion in cubase the snare is highly tuned, but it seems like as if he's rim shotting all the time. Thanks for watching. Oh, he offered the sun. Very nice. Thank you for your submission. The good stuff. The kick technique. Very nice ankles. Very precise bursts. The blasts were very nice. Good traditional blasts. The snare falling between the kicks. Yeah, the, the rolls were decent. You played with enough power, enough passion. You did enjoy it. That was very cool. I dig the room and the lights and the overall angles and performance was, in my opinion, was cool. The bad stuff. Okay, so the kicks, I am honestly not sure if you have uh, fixed those completely because the rest sounded very acoustic and raw, but the kicks sounded, of course, they were triggered, but they sounded very nice and precise so once again well done if they were precise also well done if you edited them no big deal you know so overall it was a good production in my opinion like kind of a mid range budget or let's say mid low budget and at the same time it still sounded 
cool, you know, that it was like unprocessed, not overproduced. Zoom in cameras, this is something that I already mentioned before. It's like some people just zoom in very, very slightly and very slowly, which is like almost something that you cannot notice. Maybe okay for me. <laughs> but when you zoom in very, very fast and then zoom out, it sounds weird. It sounds like you're a cameraman who's like filming some report and then you see a crime scene and you're like oh no no there he is he murdered that guy or something like this and then you zoom out it's it's a bit weird i don't know uh, whatever you know it's a matter of taste this is like it's not really good criticism or anything i would maybe still suggest you to think a bit more about mixing your drums in terms of at least like the snare and toms uh compress and eq and add more fake sh it on top to make it sound big you know it did seem like your room and the drums sounded like everything is made of a carton box so you want to sound big without being too fake but maybe just a little bit fake big enough to impress an average drum enjoyer uh cinque barzo and let's continue with submission number five and this one is from mr joshua nasaru ward Nasaru. This is The Hunt. Drum solo and composition. Take a take a take a triplets. Oh yes. Nice. Sounds cool. Oh, this is the orc theme from Warcraft. Of course, it's the hunt. Cool, the hand changing stuff on the triplets. That thing, it always throws me off. I am so bad at that. Ooh. Okay. Now we're talking double strokes. Oh. Foot blasters. Yeah. Very, very gentle playing. Whoa. The grunts are chanting. Triplet bomb blast. Ah, no, the foot cam disappeared. What's the reason for the disappearing foot cam? Are you trying to cut your video and cheat? Are you saying this is not one take? Stick spin, yes. Oh, the traditional grip splash. And now we've got some heroes of might and magic. Ah. Uh, yeah, some melodic stuff. Scandinavian shit. Impressive. Ah, oh, shit. That was amazing. He's hitting it so light, and it sounds like it's exploding, you know? It makes me question how much the stuff was compressed and processed because it sounds great but he's playing so easily or maybe it's just it just seems like it that he's not hitting hard enough swinging the yeah as if he's like a painter with a brush wow this was amazing thank you so much I absolutely loved it. The good stuff, your drum parts, like in terms of uh, composing the parts, was very interesting, uh, in my opinion, it was packed with a lot of technical stuff. I really enjoyed watching it, honestly, it was very cool. Like so much technical stuff going on, bomb blasts, really interesting drum rolls with a lot of toms, a lot of accents with the bells and stuff like that. The different blasts, double bass, the, the double strokes on the double bass were awesome. The blasts were awesome. Uh, even the sound was also very nice, like how you were very, very gentle holding back. You know, I know that you played some very extreme tempos. This was like fast stuff, very, very impressive. And you have to hold back, of course, in order to pull it off and not get too tired you know you're the harder you hit you might become stiff if you're trying to play fast tempo so this was cool that you held back you know and uh, reserved your energy till the very last minute of the song the bad stuff um once again like the way you were holding back maybe you could even you know just push a little bit more try to play as hard as you can while still prioritizing endurance and playing it till the end while being tight okay so if you feel like you can just push a little bit harder 
without sacrificing endurance, do it, okay? The drum parts that you composed and the way that you executed them was amazing. After you already got those parts nailed, let's say in your head, you know all those by heart and you can play it easily. You need to also sometimes focus a little bit more on performance, you know? So you're playing, that is nice, but you also need to remember that some people are also watching, you know? So, and I'm not talking about like crazy windmilling or doing some insane stuff, but a little bit more of the, you know, if you can, you can really tell that if a person is, is doing that, you know? So we, we have a lot of submissions in these series where people are emitting so much energy that I'm like just blown away, you know? So, and this is something maybe you could add a little bit. Of course, I know that the more technical stuff you play, the less room there is for performance as a, let's say, on stage acting performance. So, but also try to consider that. The video production, yeah, of course, you could go with more cameras, with better cameras and better lights, better, you know, audio mix. So that is still something that you could improve. Maybe not your technique at all, because I think it was absolutely awesome. So that's it. Well done. Well done. Well f***ing done. Let's continue. Entry number six. Julio Betrayer Martinez or Julio. In truth, it is I who was betrayed. Coventrate, mother of all bombs or something. The dictator. Live drum cam. Cafe Iguana. Cafe Iguana is that... The one in Monterey, Mexico. If yes, please let me know if it is. I don't really recall how the venue looks from the inside because uh, the last time I played there was maybe 2018. So it's been a while. M-O-I-B. Camera sound. A little bit. This like Pisa Tower camera. Uh, decent. Powerful. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You see? There's the energy. The passion. The kicks are so loud. He's hitting very hard, most likely. I don't know. Or maybe the drum kits are. Maybe the drum kit is just tuned very nicely. Ah, uh, cripplet kicks. Acceptable. Not the end of the world. You can really feel that he's in the moment of performing. Ah, some hiccups there. Ah! There goes your Steel Panther. Nice D beat with the double stroke kick. Yes, destroy it. This is tight. This is good. The heavy metal stuff is good. He's playing with the sticks upside down. Okay. Yeah, back to this. Yeah, saving energy. Just simple fourth notes on the hi hat. Okay, now he's tuka 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 going into the eighth notes. But be careful. Don't burn out too early. <sighs> if I yawn, it means the song needs to end. No, I'm just kidding. Nice, nice and tight. It's uh, sloppy tight, you know, so it's good. You hear that it's not edited or quantized or whatever, most likely, even because it's like a single camera sound. Ah, getting a little bit tired on the right symbol with the right hand. Muchas gracias, camarades. Thank you very much for the submission. The good stuff. Nice power and energy, passion, rather tight performance, of course, for uh, camera sound. It sounded very, very nice, like especially the kicks for one single mic, one single camera. So that was pretty okay. You know, you didn't play anything super duper technical, but what you were supposed to play, in my opinion, you played pretty nicely. As well as good technique on the right hand. Sometimes you were relaxing. Sometimes you were uh, playing eighth notes. Sometimes you were getting a little bit tired. The bad stuff. Well, first the Pisa tower camera angle, but let's say this is not no big deal, but this is something you could pay attention to in the future just to, you know, make everything look like this, you know, especially like if you use a, a grid on the phone or on the camera, sometimes you can align the, the lines, the vertical and horizontal lines. In terms of your performance, 
uh, the fast kicks were a little bit sloppier, especially like when you tried to do the very fast stuff, you had a little bit of uh, uh, popcorn uh, going on in there. When you were actually nailing pretty nicely with evenly spaced notes, those were not exactly 16th notes sometimes, so you were playing a little bit of off the grid triplets something between triplets and 16th notes so this is something that you should pay attention to in my opinion you should try to work uh, with the metronome if you don't already if you do then awesome keep working uh, pay attention to the spacing uh, of your hits make sure that you record yourself and then you can see by the wavelength on the grid how tight you are and i would recommend you to use headphones or in-ear monitors if you are not using them already because in the live situation all the stages chaos is very very confusing and you don't even know what's happening you're not sure how tight you are but then when you watch the recording you're disappointed and surprised how bad or how good it can be don't be afraid to use a little bit more body you know so the energy and the passion was there the headbanging was also there but make sure that you don't do this pointless lifeless soulless headbanging you know when you're just like headbang and like the the, the hair is just doing this stuff and you just do this as if somebody forced you to do it you know you could use a bit more of the body movement when you like play you you go like uh, with your body so this is especially you know with this kind of music it's like let's say simple easy music it's like heavy and groovy and you should really show it how you enjoy it how much fun you were having nevertheless well done well done next one is submission number seven from mr vapula vapula Fresh meat. And as you can see, the video isn't available anymore. I don't know what happened, but I already have messaged Mr. Vapula, so hopefully we can resolve this issue. And uh, this submission is gonna be moved to the next batch. If it's gonna be available, then we're gonna review it next time. And we're continue with the true submission number seven from Mr. Andre Sattler. And this is Podepa project 46 drum cover and the guy looks as confident as ever in the adidas tracksuit slipknot a drum cover recorded through a skype call <laughs> oh very nice so we got some soul fly going on i really like the music what pedals are those? Wish.com ripoff of some trick or access or... Because it's a direct drive, but I don't recognize the brand. Please let us know, I'm curious what is it. Nice ghost notes, yeah. Oh no, zoom in. What's with these zoom ins? Like, it's just this batch that we got them so, so many of those. Nice. You got like a nice molar impulse on the right hand, on the right symbol. He knows his stuff. Whoa. Okay. A bit of sloppy shifting traditional blast. It seems like he's almost push pulling with his right hand on the right symbol. Not sure though. Whoa. Wow. Wow, this is amazing, this is so good. Nice dynamics, great, great rolls. It's four over two. I don't think we managed to impress Dylan Watson, but I'm impressed. I have low standards. <laughs> and the ghost notes are nice. Not really Cody Beardslay. We're not done yet. Ooh. Now we know that he's using triggers, okay. Double strokes, that was very nice. I did not expect that. Wow, this is great, it's very technical stuff, and very precise. And then a Slipknot logo, very nice. Cool, yeah, that ending was impressive. The good stuff. The double strokes were awesome in the end. I wish you used them a little bit sooner or a little bit more so that I would have been blown away sooner. But still, this was 
in my opinion, very nice. You have great ghost notes. You have great dynamics when you were doing those uh, drum rolls. There was this one particular one that I was impressed with. That was absolutely awesome. Very decent production for such a low quality video. You know, the overall, let's say, balance of the sound is good since you were using triggers with the kicks, most likely. Uh, and then the rest was acoustic. Uh, captured with a mic or with a camera so everything was very nicely balanced also the cymbals were not too loud and the the snare and the toms were loud enough the bad stuff well first i'm gonna start quickly with the production the selfie skype camera thing uh, i'd rather try to maybe think of something else you know like have a different angle i know that the wall is right there so you couldn't push it further to capture more uh, but maybe you can just like film yourself from the side or turn the drums around and film uh, it in a bit in a bit of a different way because otherwise it looked a little bit strange yeah the zoom in zoom out that's like uh, we already covered that the audio of course in the future you could always uh, aim for using mics nicely mixed drums and all the the cool uh, top-notch production course but nevertheless this was very nice on a, you know if you're on a tight budget uh, the traditional blast was maybe one thing that I would criticize a little bit because um, you seem to know what you're supposed to do you know in terms of having a right left right left right left and making sure that the kick always goes with the symbol the snare always goes between the kicks but at the same time you were shifting you were getting behind the snare was a little bit too slow uh, I assume and it was going on top of the kicks creating a hammer blast and going again Slowing down and going between the kicks creating a traditional blast So this is something of course you want to avoid in the future So this is like let's say one of the most common traditional blast issues that people face and this is something to work on Okay, so you need to make sure that you are tight. So if it requires you to slow down Yes, the snare always has to be between the kicks no exceptions and most occasions anyway, this was awesome so uh, let's continue. Entry number eight from Mr. Ben Mikolovich. I was instructed to pronounce it like this, but I'm gonna say it's Michalovich. Michalovich. Mich Michalovic. Dream Theater Pale Blue Dot drum cover. And this is seven and a half minutes. Yep, yeah, you're Oh, yeah, this is March 2020. Oh, the beginning of pandemic. Ah, oh, the dark times. Oh, uh, yeah, ninja. Yes. Whoa, he's a magician. Okay, and this is camera sound. Relax, relax. You see, like, he's kind of, seems like he's moving a lot of his upper body when he's hitting the kicks. Make sure you try to separate your upper body from your lower body as much as you can. And this can be kind of done with balancing your body a bit better on the drum chair. Technical stuff. Triplet kicks, nice kick, Ni nice stack splash accents. It's cool that they're broken. They even sound cooler like this. I mean the left one. Whoa! What was that? What is this octopus drumming? This is like a final boss music. Yeah, this is like very, very Mike Mangini. Sorry, I did not mention my court now. Uh, this is like the most symmetric thing I've seen. <laughs> Man! Wow, very, very nice and independent movement from like doing left-handed stuff. Where it's supposed to be done with the right side as the mortals would do it. Wow! What was that? Holy f Oh no, the final boss is showing his not even final form. And this is one take, no cuts. Yeah. Ah, oh, this was awesome. I'm memorizing all this stuff. Wow. He He's hitting something there on the left, which we cannot see. I wonder what that is. Hope it's not his wife. When he hit that right splash, only once it's like <laughs> nice, nice, a lot of power, nice swing. Uh, and those heart attack tom rolls from all sides. It seems like he's trying to hit 
literally everything that he can at the same time with all hands, all toms, everything. You know, he's got only four limbs, but it seems like he wants to have at least eight. Don't we all? You know, it takes a lot of, uh, let's say, burst strength, you know, when he has to kind of like jump, make this leap between the different drums. It's a very big distance that he needs to jump and it requires a lot of energy. It's not easy and it's very easy to miss, you know, that you hit the, the hoop of the drum. Wow. Ah, there you go. He failed. That's it. This guy sucks because everything he did till now doesn't matter if he dropped the stick. That's what people would usually say. Very, very, very impressive. Awesome. Thank you for your submission and the good stuff. The technique and uh, the independence, the symmetry is uh, on a whole new level. I'm not sure if we have ever witnessed anything like this in our uh, reviews. This was absolutely awesome. I was blown away. Very tough to do and I, in my opinion you did it very very good. Uh, it was very tight overall I think you know for this kind of a camera sound. The bad stuff also nothing very bad. I mean like maybe some sloppiness here and there a little bit with kicks like inconsistency in terms of not being super duper tight uh, with the snare falling on top of the kicks you know creating maybe some flams but it's like you know you played so much stuff uh, together simultaneously like you know it requires a, a lot of focus uh, in order to pull off memorize all those parts and not mess up you know hit all the toms when you're gonna when you were doing those jumps so you know this is let's say forgivable would be awesome to hear more mics and more camera angles you know it's very nice that you did everything in in one take one cut so respect for that but would be cool to see a bit more of a, a kind of a fancy produced production Thank you. Uh, it was a blast. Okay, guys, let's move on. This is submission number nine. Mateus Matos. Math Matthew. Matthew. And this is Haken Invasion. Let's watch. Some, some spider stuff. Virus. Make sure that you follow him on Facebook and Instagram. Oh, snare. I love the snare. Wow. Wow, great. Da, 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 da. Okay, this is like kind of a tool on a budget. This is a tool Zlidla by Pavulon. Wow, nice technical stuff. And the snare, I love the way the snare sounds. High pitched, very sharp, cuts through. The attack is amazing. Nice ghost notes. Cody Beard Slay is impressed. I hope. Great dynamics. Such a pleasure to my ears. The cymbals sound great. That Sabian sounds awesome. I'm not allowed to say that, but it does sound awesome. I do assume he's a big uh, Batman fan. Judging by his shirt, the Joker in the back, and I saw a Batman mug on the shelf or something like this. There is, it is there. You can see those uh, pencils or whatever that it's like in his head. I'm wondering what floor tom sizes are those 16 and 18 that big one is looks huge and the, the small toms are like 8 and 10 or 10 and 12 uh, please let us know in the comments or like wherever you're gonna write because i'm curious about the sizes maybe it's uh, in the description if it is then i'm sorry i'm gonna read it later and then i'm stupid amazing wow very nice <laughs> That's it. No, that's not. It's still, we still got almost two minutes to go. It's just like, uh, welcome to intermission. Please stand by. Go uh, get yourself a drink or take a piss or something. We're going to be back after the, these commercials. <laughs> Where is this spider from? I think I saw it somewhere. Oh yeah, we're back, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. I want you to see... Nice. Hell yeah, horns. Batman horns. Alright, awesome. Thank you very, very much. The good stuff. 
amazing sound, amazing performance, great dynamics, great ghost notes, uh, very tight, very nice drum parts, the very nice execution of the drum parts, good power, great sounding snare, very technical, a lot of independence, a lot of this stuff was very, very impressive. Thank you so for this submission, it was, I had such a pleasure watching it, awesome. I really uh, cannot compliment you more on this because I think everything was, was cool. The bad stuff, not that much. Um, in terms of production, yeah, maybe some of the, like the, the shaking foot cam, no big deal, but may, that, that can be also somehow fixed, you know, with trying to come up with a way to absorb the shock from the you hitting the drums uh the the angles were good i mean like yeah you can always have more lights more camera angles fancier looking stuff the audio was great i i don't think uh, i could advise you anything to improve there but the video yeah could be maybe a little bit improved another thing is just in terms of your performance let's say not executing the drum parts the technical aspect was great but the performance act itself was a little bit too let's say you were focused too much on the drum parts okay so i know that they were very very challenging and tough uh but you need to also focus on the people who are watching you once again this is something that i already mentioned a few times or too many times and i need you i need to see you enjoy it and i need to see you knowing we are watching and maybe we also enjoy it. You know, if we see that you enjoy it, we enjoy it as well. You know, so you can do a little bit more of this, a bit more acting, a bit more Hollywood there with the face, with the body, with everything. That's the only thing that like, I do remember when we were rehearsing uh, with Flash God the last time uh, and uh, Francesco said, he said, okay, okay, first day, we remember how to play our instrument. <laughs> Second day, we remember how to play the songs. Third day, we focus on the parts getting everything tight so that it's not sloppy and the last day we focus on performing as if we were playing it on stage already so in the rehearsal room the last day you do is imagining that there's a crowd in front of you and that imagine that you're like yeah you're going nuts and like the crowd is going nuts and you need to do that if you're filming yourself okay so this is just like a yeah whatever friendly advice so well done well done ladies and gentlemen this is the final submission grand finale and uh this is entry number 10 which was supposed to be in the next batch but it's here because we moved one so this one is from mr steve dunk and this is the redeemed breaking of innocence official drum playthrough yes ninja Ooh, this is gonna be fast zoom out cameras what's going on come on gentle blast on the snare but the snare the way the snare sounds is very plastic okay so this is a playthrough Oh no, those cameras. So yeah, we don't see any mics, so this is just, let's say, mimicking the movement to the audio. This was always uh, kind of uh, challenging for me to do something like this, because you basically can need to replicate your own drumming without knowing if you actually didn't miss a hit or something like this. Because if you do miss a hit, the audio is still gonna be there. This is nice and powerful. So this is 360, okay. Nice, nice. He's leading with the left hand, you know, and he's a right-handed drummer, I assume. I need to see some foot cam because there's some like hurt action that happening, or something. I don't know. He's a little bit too stiff on the black. No, he's not stiff, or he kind of like, let's say, uncertain. Yeah, that the hi hat. Ah, uh, you know, it sounds good, but you can tell from the video that it's most likely it wouldn't sound so good on the camera. It sounds like a local metalcore hardcore band, you know, that you would just go and support and uh, have some beers with and just have a great evening. Cool. I could somehow imagine myself being in the crowd, you know, in the pit somehow. I don't know. This this kind of music feels nostalgic for me. Nice. Nice ending. Thank you very much. Well done. Uh, the good stuff. I like the energy. I like the power that you played. 
with a lot of, let's say, strength, you know, I'm not gonna say passion, but I'm gonna say strength, although, yeah, passion was also there. Uh, you have a very, very nice kit. Uh, you know, the, the overall, let's say that the camera angles, the moving camera was, in my opinion, pretty decent. Uh, yeah, and you played some technical stuff, technical patterns, uh, both with feet and with hands. Yeah, the blasts were nice, but, but... Before I start uh, complimenting you too much, let's go to the bad stuff immediately. Well, you know, the sound, yeah, so the sound, the camera, the no mics thing, so we already know the whole thing is, let's say, rather fake, I'm not gonna say that your drumming was not real drumming, you know, but the video itself, so, you know, there's a lot of, um, let's say, moments that could be questioned, um, how would they sound actually with like camera sound you know so especially the blast you could really tell with the blasts mm, you know this kind of um i was not convinced by the movement of your hand you know the slow stuff was good i'm sure that you played tight you played with a lot of passion and energy and like when you were hitting the snare it sounded probably most likely good you know with with that a lot of power hitting hard but the blast yeah usually like it's the fast parts like fast blasts and fast kicks uh, which can be very easily masked with this kind of approach when you film without mics you know because those are problematic those are not gonna sound that good you're gonna replace the sound you're gonna put samples on top you're gonna compress everything so the sound sounds amazing, the video looks weird, and uh, you know, for, for, let's say for an average watcher, listener, maybe that's not gonna raise any suspicions, but we're here to dissect shit. I'm not saying that this is wrong, I'm not gonna be calling out anyone, so uh, I honestly like still enjoyed watching this, even most likely knowing what's going on, this was in my opinion cool. There's another issue that I wanted to point out, and this is like actually the 360 pixels, whatever, resolution. I understand that sometimes, you know, you're on a low budget and you cannot afford expensive cameras, but this is like if 2020, if you don't have like at least an HD video or full HD, then you're kind of fall into the stone age category a little bit in my opinion, because literally every possible existing camera these days could at least do HD most likely or full HD. And uh, I'm not going to say that this is entirely unacceptable, but maybe this is something that you should uh, at least think about, you know, because you already had that big room, the multiple cameras, the dude filming you from always walking around. So like there was a lot of, let's say, uh, time and effort invested in this video. And then it's three. 60. I don't know, maybe it was rendered like this and it was uploaded to YouTube, which just like oh, compressed it or I don't know. But yeah, 360 is a little bit like kind of, uh, I'm not sure, a little bit early 2000s for me. So yeah, that, that's the only thing. Overall, I think it was nice. So uh, well done. I think it was pretty cool. I just wanted to also actually congratulate you, Mr. Steve Dunn, because you are submission number 100 that has been reviewed. So do 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 do. Ladies and gentlemen, the grand finale, the real ending. We are done for today with batch number 10. Next time, hopefully, very, very soon, we're gonna be doing batch number 11. And here are the next 10 participants with also Mr. Vapula being rescheduled. Hopefully next time he's gonna be available. For those of you guys who haven't submitted their stuff yet and would like to be featured in these series, make sure that you watch the rules video first before sending me your videos, as well as anybody who feels like supporting me financially on my Patreon, you can become my patron right here. Any help and support, of course, is always welcome during these dark and uncertain times which is gonna help me make these videos more frequently, hopefully in the future, because I do enjoy making them, but they're consuming too much time and effort for me to even make one batch, unfortunately. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, and let's hope we're gonna meet very, very soon. So until I see you all guys next time, take care and stay healthy. Cheers, bye-bye. Impressed by this precision? Me too. This is all achievable thanks to the Foot Blaster triggers. Make sure that you head to footblaster.com and use the code Eugene in order to get a discount for your next Foot Blaster trigger purchase. Wow! What was that? Holy f Oh no, the final boss is showing his not even final form.